Welcome back. MLS season previews roll on. Today's focus is Club de Foot Montreal. Here's a snapshot of their 2023 season. They finished 10th in the Eastern Conference, uh, missed out on the playoffs. They lost in the Canadian Championship final and knocked out in League's Cup group stage. They fired Hernan Lozada in November and enter Laurent Courtois as the replacement. Now, uh, this is a Columbus Crew. He was a Columbus Crew MLS Next Pro head coach where he helped lead them to the title in 2022. He was also named Coach of the Year that season. Um, he's a former MLS player for the Galaxy and Chivas USA. He had a, a decent playing career, Tony. What do we know about Laurent Courtois and what this Montreal side might look like under him? Well, first, I have uh, massive respect for anyone who has Chivas USA in their resume uh -huh, at all. Uh -huh. I always say that all the time. Um, Laurent Courtois, Courtois, he's really respected in the coaching ranks uh, for what he's done. Of course, he comes from now the Wolford Nancy tree, which is a yeah, hot commodity right now, mm -hmm. right, with the way that he, he took care of business, not only in, in Montreal, but obviously winning last year. Um, I, I'm thinking about the Montreal players because you go from Wilfred Nancy two years ago mm -hmm. and it's ball possession. Now you bring in Hernan Lozado, which is like he wants to it's high firing, you know, on all cylinders for 90 minutes. And now you're going to go back to what's going to look more like Wilfred Nancy's teams uh, because that's what he did at Crew 2. Important Victor Wanyama uh, and what it looks like two years down the road from Wilfred Nancy because he was having a best 11 season under Wilfred Nancy, right? And it was almost a revival because he was going to leave. Nancy convinced him to stay in Major League Soccer. Uh, Matthew Schwanier is probably the young sort of gun in that in that group, right? Mm -hmm. It's going to play in the middle of the field. Just got called up to the Canadian national team. But I'm interested to see what it looks like because they get rid of Romel Kyoto. Uh, Zach Brogiard, the right back, who I thought was one of the better right backs in Major League Soccer. They do bring in Juan, who has some experience in the I, league. But I, I, for some it, reason, it'll I be like, interesting. I like Juan. I, I like him a lot I, as he's well. Like, why, why, why are you apologetic about this? Because I feel like no one ever talks about Juan. He was well, not even starting in Philadelphia. Should. At Orlando, I thought he was in Orlando, very he good, was good for yeah. going forward. And he's just like, not even an under the radar, almost just like a discarded right back in the league. And I for MLS, I think he's a really good right back. And just no one talks about him. And every time I've seen him play, he plays well. Um, I, think, I, think that's then, a, I think that's an issue with Montreal. I, think, I don't know why, but it, it, I mean, Suze, you'll know this better than most of us. Every once in a while, you're like, oh, yeah, uh. <laughs> they play on Montreal yeah. and they're doing well. I think this is going to be a big, a big step in the right direction. Nothing against Losada, but getting back to a Wilfred Nazi style uh, you know, game, which has obviously suited them very well, mm -hmm. will be a big positive, be a step in the right direction. But you mentioned exactly what I think is a big issue for them, which is Wanyama. He's a little bit older now, and the East just got a lot harder. The East so. is very, very strong this mm. year. Uh, the, the issue, the Hernan Lanzada hire was always a bit of a, a head scratcher for me. I, uh, this Explosive. this seems, seems to me. Or implosive. <laughs> implosive, yeah, <laughs> more like it. Uh, this seems to make a lot more sense. Uh, the, one of the issues that they had last year was that they struggled to score goals. They only had 36 on the season. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's a guy that they signed um, who is hopefully going to help them with that, and that is Joseph Martinez, who won the Golden Boot uh, back in 2018. I, but we haven't seen him it, as the Joseph that we once knew in, in quite some time. Um, he had some, some moments at Miami, but Can I, I don't know. I want to shift the focus off of Joseph Martinez, which we know what we're getting out of him, but they not only have one guy, they have two guys now. Matias Cocaro is also has been a very under the, very hmm. from El Globo, very underrated signing for MLS. I feel like he's he was he's part, I don't know underrated under the radar in Argentina. He scores goals against big teams in important games. He's persistent. He's sneaky, and uh, I'm I'm happy to see him progresses take a next step in his career in, in MLS because I think he's a good a good asset well, to, to the league and to okay. Montreal. What type of forward is he? Because I think if you're going to play Joseph Martinez, you need a different type because he's become now more of like a post-up forward. Mm -hmm. Someone's going to stay in the middle of the box. Is he a guy that can run around Joseph he Martinez? Yeah. So it could be a good compliment. I, I, I think that can be a great tandem for Montreal. Um, you think they play both? Do we have a projected 11 yeah, for Montreal? Fun. Yeah, but I, I, I think... 
Can we take a look? Kokaro, Kokaro should be thought as the, the main guy over Joseph yes. Martinez. They what, paid 1.8 million for him. What has He's Joseph, the main guy. What has Joseph Martinez shown you in the last two seasons where you say, all right, let's build our team nothing. or at least our attack no, no, around him? But he has the pedigree to score in this league. He knows the competition. He's played in all these stadiums. He's He's been around long enough. He's going to make an amazing impact sub. And absolutely amazing. If he can give you the old Joseph for 30, 35 minutes a match, mm -hmm. he is going to be a wonderful piece to bring off the bench. Okay. Especially in the team that loves to pass as much a Wolf, as a Wilfred Nancy one will. He's going to get opportunity. So where where would he be? Uh, he's obviously not included in this projected oh, 11 Poku, 20, that, That's where he would be yeah. as the other forward. Um, yeah, but again, I think he's at the point where he needs somebody around him that's mobile because he's not going to be nearly as mobile as he was with, you know, in Atlanta with Miguel Marone and that group. I think Raheem Edwards is also going to be huge for them. Mm -hmm. You know, Canadian international can play, uh, can play that wing back position really well. Really strong. Has been in the league for a while. I think he's going to be a big, big pickup. Seasoned for them. MLS yes. vet. Uh, do you see them as a potential playoff team. Are they going to be a, they're, I I, they're right another now. dark horse team that yeah, we always I, seem to talk I, about. I'm not seeing it right now. Yeah. I think Lauren Courtois, he, he's going to need a little bit of time to put his stamp on this group. Um, I, and, and who knows what they do in the summer, right? If they go and make some some moves in the summer, but um, it will yeah, be improved, I, I think. If you're asking me to bet today on, yeah. on them, I, I would say no. Yeah, I'd say yeah. At least sneak into the playoffs. I think I, think I could see them sneaking in. I don't yeah. know. It'll be it'll be. I do think they're going to be much improved from last season, though. Play in team. Play in team. There you go. But again, you're ninth, changing the style again of the whole group. It's going to take a little bit of time. But yep. you're changing it back to something they might remember. <laughs> <laughs> or something that they want to forget. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? It's MLS. 